Welcome back to Todd Jeremy here. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about why McFarlane with their multiverse and with the other things that are going on with the DC license, why are they succeeding at retail while Hasbro and Mattel seem to be struggling at retail, struggling with getting product to retail, struggling selling product. Their stuff is going to clearance and they're putting most of their stuff on their own websites with Mattel Creation and with Hasbro Pulse. While McFarlane cranks out wave after wave after wave after wave all at retail for the most part let's talk about why they're successful coming up so the first reason mcfarlane is winning at retail is because they can actually get product on the shelves product at retail you can actually go into a store and you can buy the stuff you can see it hey this is coming out Oh, it's at the store right now, and it's in abundance. There's plenty of it. I, I'm sure there's a few Chase figures. Some of the stuff's kind of hard to get, but then again, more shows up. So it seems like, for whatever reason, McFarlane is not struggling with getting the product produced and shipped over here the same way Hasbro and Mattel are. And actually, I think Mattel's even doing a better job than Hasbro. Hasbro, for the most part, is does seems like a toy company that doesn't want to sell toys and is having a lot of trouble getting any product to retail whatsoever so that's a challenge on Hasbro's behalf and then even with Mattel same thing but when it comes to McFarlane they don't have all the same problems they don't have all of the manufacturing issues apparently there's something to be said about being able to walk into your Walmart or your Target and to buy the figure that you're looking for and that's something that we are missing today as toy collectors for the most part not getting to get this at retail everything being ordered online and it's very impersonal and when it shows up it's not an event finding it retail is a much bigger event that's always been that way it always will be that way even when we shift completely away from retail which it seems the direction we're going the next reason that mcfarlane is successful at retail is because they constantly refresh with more product more product and more product and more product over and over and over it's not like you're seeing the same exact style figures on the shelves for six eight nine months at a time like you see with star, star wars black series and uh even with now with origins we've had a wave since january the same wave of origins figures on the shelves from mattel but look we just keep getting more and more different stuff i don't even collect the vast majority of what comes out but it's more interesting to even look at than the stuff that i collect so i go to the store just to look at mcfarlane Yes, it may seem kind of crazy, but it does feel like I go to the store just to look at McFarlane product. What's this? Who are these people? I don't even know these characters, but it's still interesting to see something new. And then you look over at the same old Lando that's been staring at you for how long? And even if you're not interested in all of the different variations and stuff, this is really cool that they can put so many different figures out so fast. But for whatever reason, bigger companies can't? That doesn't make any sense. The next reason that they're successful at retail is price. See, they've done everything to keep the price down. The standard figure itself, very few accessories, 20 bucks. Now, 20 bucks seemed like a lot. They even dropped the price. They worked out a deal with Walmart to take them to 15.88 for a while, and they may even do that again for the holiday season, who knows. But they kept their standard figure for 20 bucks. But Hasbro and Mattel are trying to eliminate the standard figure and make everything a deluxe. And if you look at it, you're not getting anything new or extra out of some of these figures, and they're charging you a deluxe price. It seems like they're trying to eliminate the $20 price range, where temporarily at the $25 price range, they want everything to be 30 and more, whether you get more out of it or not. At the end of the day, at retail, you can charge whatever you want, and then we'll just wait for it to go on clearance. And that's why, and I believe, that's why the vast majority of the products for Mattel and Hasbro are shifting over to Hasbro Pulse and to Mattel Creations. The next reason I think they're successful is that they have a blend of classic looks and modern looks. So there's a lot going on right here. You could see that it attracts people and collectors that collect and they want it to look just like the original uh, 66 Batman kind of stuff or they want to look just like the first Superman and all of those. But then again, there's so many different areas so many different deep cuts that they can do and they are doing that i have absolutely no clue what they are i mean i look at the designs i think they're kind of cool is he just making this stuff up and then someone somewhere gives me an explanation that no this is 
from the here and this is from there. So I don't really know because I don't follow the DC so much. I'm more into the kind of the Kenner superpower stuff and if what matches that. But I do look at these and I appreciate them for what they are. But for the most part, they sell well. But having a nice variety to choose from when you go to the store is really good. And I'm not seeing that as much with Mattel or with Hasbro. Because it seems like the same old figures every time I go to the store, go to retail. And if it wasn't for BBTS, I wouldn't even have a Hasbro or a Mattel collection. I do want to point out that they have done Build-A-Figures and so that has added to the price. And I think it's kind of interesting. It's four figures to build a bigger, more interesting figure. So the Build-A-Figures are okay. I think a lot of people get excited about them. But at the end of the day, if you're excited about the figure you're buying, then you should be excited about that Build-A-Figure also. So I really can't speak to the Build-A-Figures, but it seems like everybody is excited about this that collects this. They like them, they're selected to be good characters, and of course, they're bigger and much bigger than a standard figure, which works out really well. I thought the horse was pretty cool. So far, what I appreciate the most about this toy line, about McFarlane getting the DC license, what I appreciate the most is their Batman 66 stuff. Now, the thing about this is that the Batman 66 stuff is great. It's a, a, a decent price. It's a great scale, and everything they put out looks fantastic. In fact, if you don't know you're looking at toys, and you glance at the picture, you might think you're watching the show. So that's how good the stuff is. Now, people talk about the, the Batcave for $30 is, is a piece of junk. It's just garbage. It's a backdrop for adult collectors to display their stuff. If you wanted it to be... A big giant playset that has a ton of features for $250. Well, that's not what this is, and that's not what I wanted. I wasn't in on a giant playset for $250. I was in on this $30 backdrop, and it does what I want 10 times better than I could have ever imagined. So I'm really happy with it. Same thing about the figures. Now, people complain about the capes, and yeah, the capes are cheap, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then the Batmobile is a little undersized. So I will admit it's not perfect, but just look at this scene. I was able to get every figure in the line that I wanted at retail. Now they had some chase variants that I didn't find, like this guy here, and that is kind of a problem to completist collectors. I don't know if I'd call myself a completist with the Batman 66 line, I'm just having fun with it, but at the end I probably will be a completist and then have to track this thing down, that is a little frustrating. But you can get a Robin, you can get a Robin, and maybe not the variant, maybe you didn't find the variant. But I, got, I definitely got a Robin at retail. I can, I can prove that. The next round of the Batman 66 is sort of a villain's lair. And then we're going to get a few other things with it. But this is really exciting. Now, I, I personally don't think this villain lair, lair is going to sell well. But they don't really care. I mean, he makes what he makes. Todd's going to make what he thinks is cool. And if it sells, great. If it doesn't. We'll move on to the next project. He's not going to dwell on it forever and say, well, because this fails, I'm just not going to make anything else. He's going to keep on going, but how deep is he going to go? He's bringing Batman and the Joker back out in multiple different iterations. So you can almost always get a Batman, uh, sometimes a Joker, and they're going to be slightly different iterations. That is kind of key to a successful toy line is having the most popular character still available all of the time and then they end up clearancing out the last wave so we get the new wave so you have to kind of refresh it and having the black and white versions i guess that's interesting there was a lot of question about will we get more villains mr freeze perfect villain that works out fantastic but how many more villains will we get knowing how crazy the main line for the dc multiverse has been and so many characters i could see you making pretty much every villain like why not why would he not at least make the big hitters that have never been made before or have not been made in a long, long time? I could see him doing those. And, of course, we get the Bat Cycle. We're getting more vehicles. It's fleshing out the 66 Batman line like I haven't seen before. Now, Mattel did a pretty good job. I will admit, Mattel did a pretty good job in the past, but I like the look of these better. There's less articulation. I'm not posting them in crazy crazy poses and by the way these characters didn't do massively crazy poses in the show so it works it fits but i never imagined them making a bat cycle like this 
So putting all of this together, putting everything together with availability, uh, price, plenty of refresh on not just current stock and more getting restocked, but new figures, new waves coming one after the other. It's exciting. It's what it should be at retail. It's how a toy company should operate. Superpowers is going to do all of it. I feel like Superpowers is going to blow up. It's going to be the next leg in what goes on with McFarlane. I'm excited about it. I've only seen the Supermobile locally, but I probably once these start showing up, they'll show up in just a, a tsunami of these. But then Wave 2 is going to come, and so you better snatch these up because he's leading strong with very strong characters in the beginning, and he probably won't put these back out. So if you see a Superman and a Batman and you want it, get it. Ten bucks. So every single thing, every single thing that's made them successful is being carried into this, but it's being quadrupled down on. Ten dollar figures, five inch scale. These match the, well, they're a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than Kenner's superpowers, and the packaging matches it. And he's going for that price point, but giving you all kinds of play value in all of the vehicles and then the figures. Now the figures don't actually have the action in them anymore, the gimmick. And the capes are cheap, and the, they show up with a hole in them. There's, they're not perfect. It's not perfect world. But if you're never going to open these anyway, I guess some of those problems aren't a problem. They've already said Wave 2 is going to be the John uh, Stewart Green Lantern, which I'm, I've am i just looked this stuff up to figure out what this stuff's supposed to be. Batman, uh, Who Laughs, and then uh, Rebirth, uh, Flash. So there's a, there's a lot of new stuff that's going to be coming down the pipeline, and I think it's going to come pretty quick. What's cool about this is that he's not coming out and publicly announcing and hyping up stuff that's a year out or six months out or or hey look at this great item you're not going to get this year it'll be sometime next year so they're not doing that they're not playing that game he doesn't play that game in fact he didn't even start showing this stuff off until it was already at retail you could get this it's already at retail and he kind of i think he waited till he felt like not only did it just hit retail but it already was available through a lot of retail, many different outlets, so that when people get to watch him talk about this and him actually present this, you can run out to your store and buy it. That is smart marketing. That's how you do that. You don't hype it up for 2023 and 2024, like we're seeing with Hasbro and a lot of them. What you do is you hype up something that's in the store right now. And he didn't even announce it until, what, well, there are already like 20 reviews online? So now with this line, how far are they going to go? How deep are they going to go into this line? I feel like they're going to go pretty deep. Now I would, I don't know if they're going to do every figure that was made, but it's only 33 figures. Like how long would it take him to burn through 33 figures? Like by the end of 2023, he'd have all 33 and then 25 additional figures that he wished they would have made back in the day. I mean, maybe he's going to go to 66 or hundred figures. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this? But what is going to happen? It's going to be retail success. So I'm curious what you guys think about the Todd McFarlane success at retail. Whether or not you even collect this, do you see every single thing that I am pointing out? All these points that I pointed out, do you see them at the store? Has anything that he's made with his new DC license, for the most part, excited you? And will any of these push you over the edge to start buying McFarlane stuff if you're not even a McFarlane collector? And are you perfectly excited and happy about buying all of your Mattel and Hasbro stuff online? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe to your hanger out.